Oh my goodness, stop right there. I know you've been struggling with print and cut, okay? But it's not because you've been doing it wrong. It's just that there's a better way. And the best part, no, the solution is not having to spend an extra 10, 15, or 20 grand on a laser for a camera. I have finally cracked the code and have the perfect recipe to make sure that anybody, no matter what laser they're using or what printer they're printing on, gets perfect 100% accuracy when using print and cut in Lightburn software. So are you ready? Let's go. Look, ever since I got into UV printing over a year ago, you guys have constantly reached out to me and told me, Emily, I cannot get print and cut to work. And honestly, that frustrates me because believe it or not, I actually care, guys. I care a lot. And when you guys are struggling with something, I kind of make it my personal mission to crack the code and find the solution. So that has been my mission, no kidding, for the last year. I have been surveying you guys, talking to as many of you guys as I can, so I can understand what the pain points are. And after talking to hundreds of people, I've narrowed it down to two main things. Challenge number one is getting your red dot pointer spot on on your target. Challenge number two is pretty simple, and that is that many of you just don't know how to slow down the speed on your controller. So those are the main pain points. So I kept troubleshooting, trying a bunch of different things, because it wasn't just how to get it to work for me. The real challenge is getting it to work for everybody across the board. Again, no matter what laser, no matter what printer you're using. Then one day I was having this very same conversation with my friend and Laser Launch Academy alumni, Elizabeth from Would Be Awesome Gifts. And she told me, Emily, I just do print and cut the way you taught me to, but I'm too lazy to make a target, so I just print a black dot. And I was like, hmm, print a dot, okay. Let's, let's test this out and see where it can take us. So I tried printing a black dot and I figured, okay, this, this has something here, but I could still see a little bit of wiggle room for making it a little more reliable, okay? So let's go ahead and start with the first thing you need to do to make sure that you get print and cut accurate every time. Step one in the recipe to getting perfect cuts every time is to print a teeny tiny white dot. When you specifically print a white dot and you make the dot as small as you possibly can, you're gonna see how when you line it up on the laser, it shines really bright and that's how you know you are spot on. Let me show you how. Step one begins with your print file. Whether you're in Adobe Illustrator, Canva, Corel, it doesn't matter, Inkscape, you name it, okay? I've got my earring file set up and if I drag, oops, and if I grab this down here, you're gonna see I have a sneaky little shape hidden right there, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. And this is gonna be my target. Now, I have found after troubleshooting that a black dot works, but I find that it's more consistent for everybody to line up if the dot is white, okay? So you can see here it's ever so slightly off-white. Uh, depending on your printer, you know, it might not print a true white if you have it set up like this. So just to make my life easy, I have it set to ever so slightly. See how it's not set to zero? It's 3% so that it's not a true white. Okay, so I've got that set up there. And I also have another one zoomed out a little too much. I have another one over here at the top. Now, another tip here, okay? Lightburn will be even more accurate the further apart you can put the targets, okay? So I've got plenty of distance in between them. I have a feeling this is gonna be pretty spot on, okay? So now that I have my, my print file set up, I need to hop over to Lightburn with my cut file. Okay, so here I've got my cut file, and you'll notice I have made my targets specifically a tool layer. I prefer it to do it this way because I don't need it to engrave the dot, I don't need it to score the dot, and I don't need it to cut the dot. I just need the dot to serve as a target position. So I intentionally make my targets a tool layer, okay? And because I am printing this on the back of clear acrylic, because I want you to look through the acrylic to see the image, I need to mirror it as well. So I'm gonna flip it right here. And now it's ready. Okay, it's ready for printing cut, and you're about to see just how simple and easy it is. Okay, so let me turn on the laser, 
and then we can set the target positions. All right, so for the first target position, I prefer to set it up manually myself. Let me show you why. All right, so I've got a bunny helping me here. This is kind of hard to do with the camera, but I'm gonna do my best to show you. I prefer to line up the first target just on my own without the software and without using you know, the arrow. So I just go in and you're gonna see what's gonna happen is as soon as, boom, see it right there? It should brighten up. So if I'm not on the target, it's not as bright. And then boom, do you see that? I'm gonna do it a couple of times because I'm hoping that it shows on the camera for you guys can see it. But in person, it's very apparent. So I'm not on target, I'm on target. Not on target, okay? on target, boom. That's why I like to have the dot so teeny tiny because then I know that I am spot on every time. All right, let's go ahead now and set the first target position in Lightburn. Now that I have my beam spot on my dot, now I can finally use print and cut. So I'm gonna go to laser tools, print and cut, and start the wizard. And I'm gonna set the first target position and you're gonna see boom, it's gonna recognize my position there. And now I can go ahead and set the second target position. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. I can close out of that. It's not gonna lose your first position. Even though I closed out of it, you can see it's still highlighted there. So I'm gonna grab my second target position, resume to my wizard, and I'm gonna tell it, I'm not gonna set the target position yet. I'm gonna tell it to jog to that position. Sometimes it's gonna be spot on, sometimes it's not because it all depends on how I laid it on the laser, but this will get me there faster. So I'm gonna tell it to jog there and watch what happens. The laser's gonna move as close to that spot as possible. Let's see how close it got. All right, so as you can see, it got pretty close, but it's definitely not spot on. And now this is the next really important step that's gonna make all the difference in addition to the white dot. All right, so this part right here really trips up a lot of people because they don't know how to do something as simple as slowing down the speed of the laser travel movements on their controller. All I need to do is figure out where on my controller can I control the speed. So whether you have a thunder laser, a boss laser, or basically if you have a controller that looks different, we all have the same power to do what I'm about to do. So here, my little guide tells me I need to go to shift plus Z minus to get to the speed. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, Z minus, and that's gonna take me to the control panel here where I can control the speed. You can see my gantry or my laser head is traveling on the gantry at 331 millimeters per second. But to line stuff up with print and cut, I need to lower that significantly. Honestly, I like to, oops, went the wrong way there. I like to make everything down to zero and I keep my speed at one, okay? So simple, but you're gonna see how this helps me get perfectly accurate on my white dot. So now that I've lowered the speed, let's go ahead and move the laser head to the correct position. Okay, now I've slowed my speed and now I can very easily control, look at that, boom. Spot on. Did you see how that brightened up? It's not bright. Boom, spot on. That's how you know you're spot on and that's how you're gonna get print and cut to be so nice and accurate. Let me try in a different angle here because I wanna make sure you see what's happening on the camera. So I'm spot on, not spot on. Boom, brightens up, okay? That's what you're looking for, not bright, boom, okay? Now let's go set the second target position. Okay, see that wasn't very hard at all. So now I can set the second target position. Now Printing Cut is gonna ask you if you want it scaled or not scaled. I do scaled because it will align my outputs even if I've messed up, okay? So those are the three things. Your white dot, slowing down the speed on your controller, and scaling it. And when you do that, it's perfect every time. Let me show you. So let's say you just wanna test it because you don't trust yourself. You know, you have like PTSD because you've done print and cut so many times and it, it's never accurate. I like to grab just one. Let me unroot my thing here, okay? I'm gonna grab this one, for example. 
And we're just going to go ahead and frame it and let's see if it looks like it's supposed to do what I want it to do. So let's send it over to the laser and let's frame it. Before you frame it though, you want to make sure that you return back to your speed. Otherwise it's going to frame it and take forever, right? We don't want that. So now that we're back to our speed, let's frame everything and we'll be ready to go in just a minute. And beautiful. There you go. Now let's run the job. Okay, so I realized as I was editing the footage that was actually a little blurry. So this is as close as I can get and still have it looking nice and clear for you guys. Now I do like to have a teeny tiny offset around my image so you can see that and it's perfect. And now I have these uh, adorable, you know, teacher earrings ready for back to school season. And it took, I mean, honestly, just minutes to put it together. It probably felt slower because obviously I was slowing down to teach you guys. But once you start doing this, it becomes like second nature to you and you're going to find that you just do this so quickly and it just becomes part of your everyday rhythm and now you no longer have to do you know cut and then print and do all that work around this is going to save you so much time and i hope you get a ton out of this lesson so let's recap step one is to print a teeny tiny white dot Step two is to slow down the speed on your controller. And step three is to scale the outputs. When you do all those things, the stars aligned and magic happens with your print and cut. Up until this point, I have not heard or seen a single laser teacher figure out this recipe. So I'm really, honestly, I am so excited to finally bring this to you guys because I know it's gonna change the world of printing cut for all of you. So if you found value out of this lesson, by all means, please subscribe, hit the bell button so you get a notification every time I have a new video. This is a preview lesson of what learning with me looks like inside my premier online laser course, Laser Launch Academy. So if you are struggling in your laser journey and you're looking for this kind of help, you know what to do. Just click on the link below, enroll if enrollment's open, or get on the wait list until the next session. And with that, guys, I'll see you guys here soon over at That Mom with a Laser. Bye, guys. Bye.